بكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه يسبح له فيها بالغدو والآصال رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار ليجزيهم الله أحسن ما عملوا ويزيدهم من فضله والله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب We are commemorating the martyrdom of our second Imam Al-Imam Al-Hasan Al-Mujtaba alayhi salatu wassalam this Imam lived for a period of 47 years only, from the year 3 of the Hijrah after the arrival of the Prophet وسلم, to the city of Medina, three years after his arrival, until the 50th. So that is, in the Hijri calendar is 47 years. In the Gregorian calendar, it's less than that. It is 46 years. His brother, Imam Hussein, lived till the age of 58. And between Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, between their martyrdom is about 11 years. But between their birth is about one year. Some historians say even less than one year between the birth of Imam Hassan and the birth of Imam Hussein, alayhim as -salam. And the life of the Imam, the last part of it is very painful. Because the Imam has been betrayed by the community. The community who chose him after the assassination of his father in the year 40, 40 Hijri in the mosque of Kufa. The Muslim community decided to elect his son, Imam al Hassan, as the new caliph. But his Khilafah and his leadership lasted only for six months because the Muslim community was devastated, it was divided. On the other hand, Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan had captured Syria. And his influence, not only on the Syrian people, on the people of Sham, which is the greater area of Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, Jordans today, not only his influence was very great, but his campaign of distortion of the truths, the distortion of the truth was even greater. He would hire first-class liars and fabricators who are willing to sell their faith, 
who are willing to sell their conscious in return of few dirahim, few dananir, few dollars. He would hire them not only in Syria but elsewhere to brainwash people, to tell people that Ali ibn Abi Talib not, does not even pray, doesn't pray. And do you know that this lie still exists today? Yesterday I had a friend in my house. He said when his daughter, who goes to an Islamic school, an Islamic school in Southern California, she said to her friends that I want to go and pray. One of them said, do you pray? Do you guys pray the Shia? Do you pray? This is what happened during the time of Muawiyah. Muawiyah was able to convince the people of Sham that Ali ibn Abi Talib does not pray. This is why they were shocked when they heard that he was killed in the mosque. What does he do inside the mosque? He doesn't pray. And he was able to hijack the Khilafah, the leadership of the Ummah, not the Imamah. Imamah, nobody can take the Imamah from our Imams because Imamah God says, Inni nasi imama. I am the one who is ordaining you, appointing you imam. So they cannot take the imam, the universal leadership. They cannot take that holy position from our imams. But the seat of the caliphate, they can take it. Because this seat is related to the dunya. This seat is related to people who are attached and obsessed with this life, with the lower life. After six months, Muawiyah became Amir al Mu'minin, the commander of the faithfuls of the lead of commander of the faithfuls. People submitted to him for 20 years. 20 years as Amir of Syria, the other 20 years as Amir al Mu'minin of the entire Islamic countries. No wonder how people give bay'ah to Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, a murderer. Because it happened 1,300 years ago, it happened. Muslim Ummah is used to put their hands in the hand of those tyrants, murderers, and thugs. This is not a new story. I was not surprised when Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi became a, a caliph, Khalifa. Because Fulan and Fulan and Fulan and Fulan, they became Khalifa before him. When the Ummah does not respect itself, when the Ummah, the community, does not have self-respect and self-worth, then they do bay'ah, they pay allegiance to any corrupt person, to any thug, to any murderer. God said, I presented you with the best example, follow them. God says, those are the leaders. Don't turn your back to them. The Prophet says, if you follow my family after me, لن تضلوا بعد أبدا. You are not going to be confused or misguided or lost or destroyed. You're going to be respected and honored. But we have a choice. People have a choice. People have a choice. This life is about choice. What is your choice? Ask yourself. Do you want to follow the corrupt or do you want to follow the purified? Tonight, we commemorate the martyrdom of the second Imam, who is from the purified community, purified household. Imam al Hassan was poisoned. How did he die? He was poisoned by the poison of Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan, who gave it to Ju'da, a lady. She's not a lady. Ju'da bintul Ash'ath. Muawiyah purchased this poison from the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire. This poison was not found in the Muslim countries. So he sent 
a special delegate to the Roman king asking him for the most dangerous poison that you have in your kingdom, in your country. The Roman king answered him. He said, we don't use poison against people. Against our opponents, we don't use poison. What do you want to do with that poison? Why? He said, because I want to use it against the son of a prophet who intended to destroy your empire. The son of the prophet. Can you imagine? I need this poison to kill the son of a prophet, which is a prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who threatened your empire. Send it to me. And Imam Hassan, this woman, she puts the poison two failed attempts in the past, but the third time the poison was very effective was very lethal. And Imam Hassan suffered for, some people say, several days as a result of this poison, and then he died. In the year 50th of Hijri, in al Medina al Munawwara, and I'm going to tell you why he's buried in Baqiya at the end, inshallah. While Imam Hassan was sick, just before his death, a companion, a good man by the name of Junada ibn Umayya al-Ansari, a companion of the Prophet, visits Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam And then he says to him, Idhni ibn Rasulillah. I came here to listen to your advice. Imam Hassan didn't tell him, leave me alone. Leave me alone, I'm sick, I'm, I'm about to die. I can't talk to you. He never said that. He said, yes. Naam, istaidda li safarik. Be always prepared for your departure, for your safar, for your trip. We have a trip ahead of us. And we must embark on that trip. You can't stay behind. Maybe from these dunyawi, worldly trips, you can stay behind, you can change your mind. But that trip, you can't change your mind. Even if you say, I don't want to go, Israel says, sorry. I have orders to take you. Naam, istaidda li safarik. Wahassil zadaka qabla huduli ajalik. Prepare the provision. When we travel, we take a day or two to pack. Okay? We need to pack. Zad, this is provision. You need the clothing, you take your shampoo with you, you take things with you. That real trip also needs provision, but you don't take food or shampoo with you or your wallet. You need to take your good deeds with you. Amal al-Salih. Your good deeds in these 60 years, in these 70 years, 80 years, whatever you have accumulated of good deeds, you have to take them with you. وَحَصِّلْ زَادَكَ قَبْلَ حُلُولِ أَجَلِكَ Before Ajal arrives, before your time comes, because there is no delay, when our time comes, they do not give us any respite, no delay. You have to prepare it. وَحَصِّلْ زَادَكَ Go and get your provision. قَبْلَ حُلُولِ أَجَلِكَ Before death arrives. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ وَلَا تَحْمِلْ وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ تَطْلُبُ الدُّنْيَا وَالْمَوْتُ يَطْلِبُكَ And let it be known to you that you always, you try to stay longer, but death is after you. You seek to stay longer, تَطْلُبُ الدُّنْيَا To stay longer in this life, but mouth, death, he seeks to take you. So we have a struggle every single day between two things. Our souls wants to stay longer, wants to enjoy this life. قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونَ God says in this book at the time of death, some people say, please send me back. Don't take me now. ارْجِعُونَ لَعَلِّ أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتِ Maybe in these few days that you give me, I can fix it. I can fix what I destroyed. أَعْمَلْ صَالِحًا Do something good for my akhirah, for my hereafter. 
The answer comes, Kalla innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. This is wishful thinking. We cannot grant him a return. وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ You are embarking on a journey which has no end. It has beginning but it has no end. That journey is the journey of Barzakh. Imam al-Sadiq says, أَخْوَفُ مَا أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ هُوَ الْبَرْزَخِ My worries about you, my community, is that the state of Barzakh. We don't know what happens there. We really don't know. It's very dark. Nobody explains to us what happens in Barzakh. We think that we put the dead one in his grave and most of the time we say he, he rests in peace. He rests in peace, mashallah. He, he, he died peacefully. <laughs> died peacefully. How do you know he died peacefully? Quran says, كلا إذا بلغت التراقي وقيل من راق وظن أنه الفراق والتفت الساق بالساق. القرآن says وجاءت سكرة الموت بالحق سكرة stupor. When someone is drunk, he doesn't know what is happening. He's in pain. How do we know he died peacefully? Yes, if we do good deeds, it will be peaceful death, peaceful departure, if we prepare for it. But if I am not to prepare for it. How do I expect it to be peaceful? وَحَصِّلْ زَادَكَ قَبْلَ حُلُولِ أَجَلِكَ وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ تَطْلُبُ الدُّنْيَا وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ تَطْلُبُ الدُّنْيَا وَالْمَوْتُ يَطْلُبُكَ وَلَا تَحْمِلْ هَمَّ يَوْمِكَ الَّذِي لَمْ يَأْتِ عَلَى الْيَوْمِ الَّذِي أَنْتَ فِيهِ Do not worry about tomorrow. You are living today. Don't worry about the provision of tomorrow. Where is my food tomorrow? Where is my rent tomorrow? What can I do tomorrow? Have faith in God. Some people have faith in their savings. Yes, I have savings. I'm not worried. But some people don't have saving. Or even if they have saving, they don't have faith in the saving. They have faith in God. Be hopeful in what God has saved for you. Not in what you have saved for yourself. Because what you have saved for yourself, it could go any minute. It could betray you. But what God, if God saves something for you, doesn't go away. It is protected there. It is protected. Mahfuz. وَلَا تَحْمِلْ هَمَّ يَوْمِكَ Do not worry about tomorrow, about next week, next month, next year. There is God. There is merciful God. Do good and don't worry. Don't worry. وَلَا تَحْمِلْ هَمَّ يَوْمِكَ الَّذِي لَمْ يَأْتِي The day has not come yet. عَلَى الْيَوْمِ الَّذِي أَنْتَ فِيهِ On today, don't, don't think about tomorrow. Do good and don't worry. Even if you lose your job, there is a God who is going to provide you. We have faith in God. We recite this dua after the Isha prayers. اللهم إنه ليس لي علم بموضع رزقي. I really don't know where is my provision. Is it in the east, west, in this company, in this corporation, in this shop, in this business? I really don't know. وإنما أطلبه. I go after it. I struggle. I strive. I'm not lazy. I go after it. وإنما أطلبه بخطرات تخطر على قلبي فأجول في طلبه البلدان. Sometimes I have to travel in the land. In many countries, I have to fly 20 hours to get my, to my destination to make business. Allahumma faj'al, Allahumma fasalli ala Muhammadin wa alih, waj'al ya Rabbi rizqaka li wasi'ah. We ask Allah, the barakah from Him, the blessing from Him. If you are not lazy, don't worry. We are not going to starve. There is a God who is serving and feeding and helping and paying attention, not just to you, to insects, to animals, to birds, to fish, let alone you. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ لَا تَكْسِبُ مِنَ الْمَالِ شَيْئًا فَوْقَ قُوتِكَ Imam Hassan, he's dying. He's dying. He's on deathbed, but listen to his wisdom. If we get sick, 
we mourn, we cry, we complain. Imam Hassan is dying, this is poison, he's about to die. But he speaks wisdom, those are Ahlul Bayt. He gives instructions to his followers, to his disciples, about how to live in peace. He never complains. He never complains. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ لَا تَكْسِبُ مِنَ الْمَالِ شَيْئًا فَوْقَ قُوتِكَ And let it be known to you that whatever you make above and beyond what you need is going to be a burden. How much do you eat per day? How many meals? How many sets of dressing and clothing you need? How many sets of shoes, pairs of shoes you need? How many cars you drive? How many homes? How many bedrooms? Whatever you need is okay, but above that, it's going to be a burden. It is going to be a liability. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ لَا تَكْسِبُ مِنَ الْمَالِ شَيْئًا فَوْقَ قُوتِكَ إِلَّا كُنْتَ فِيهِ خَازِنًا لِغَيْرِكَ The money that you make which is above your need, it's going to be a liability and you're going to save it for people who are going to come after you. It's not for you. For those who might not even remember you. Believe me, my friends, I know in some Muslim communities, people who their father died, immediately they went to court. Five sons, six, and I don't know how many daughters. Immediately after the burial of their father, they went to court because they were fighting over inheritance, over their share. And some of them were cursing their dad. Allah on my father who didn't, you know, didn't solve this problem during his life. And now we are fighting in court. The father left them a fortune. They are cursing him. So why do you, why do, you do this? Use the money yourself during your lifetime before you die. Use it for goodness. You are the best one to execute the money. Don't say, don't write a letter to your son, to your daughter, to your neighbor, to your cousin. Please, after my death, do this and this and this. You do it yourself. Be smart. Be smart. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ فِي حَلَالِهَا حساب. This dunya. Even if you gain the money from a halal source, there is hisab accountability on the Day of Judgment. The IRS are there. Come on, tell me, how did you make this money? Even the halal. Wafi haramiha, if you gain the money from haram source, there is retribution and punishment. Wafi haramiha, iqab. Wafi shubuhat, if the money you really don't know, is this halal or haram? Wafi shubuhati itab. Reproach. They tell you you didn't know the source of this money. How did you use it? How did you use it? There is reproach. Itab. فَأَنزِلِ الدُّنْيَا بِمَنْزِلَةَ الْمِيتَ Treat this dunya, the wealth of this dunya, like crayon, like dead flesh. If you are hungry, you are stuck in the mountain, and there is dead flesh. Would you touch it? Some people rather die, they don't touch it. Some people, they take what is really necessary to survive. To survive. Imam Hassan says this, treat dunya like a rotten, rotten food. Take what is necessary. Enjoy what is necessary. But the rest, share it. Build your akhirah. Buy pieces of land in the akhirah with it. Buy your paradise. Make your paradise attractive. Decorate your paradise with your money. With your own money. Decorate your paradise with it. فَأَنزِلِ الدُّنْيَا بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْمِيْتَ فَخُذْ مِنْهَا مَا يكفيك. Take what is only necessary from the dunya. فَإِنْ كَانَ حَلَالًا if, if what you are taking is halal, كُنْتَ قَدْ زَهِدْتَ فِيهِ You took what is really necessary. You didn't take more. وَإِنْ كَانَ حَرَامًا if that was haram and you took it out of necessity, لم يكن فيه وزر. They are not going to hold you accountable if you take it out of necessity. وَإِنْ كَانَ الْعِتَابِ فَالْعِتَابُ يَسِيرُ And then Imam says, وَعْمَلْ لِدُنْيَاكَ كَأَنَّكَ تَعِيشُ أَبَدًا 
وعمل لآخرتك كأنك تموت غدا Work for this dunya as if you are living forever How does that? You are telling me don't get attached to the dunya and now you say work for the dunya as if you are living forever? Yes, the work here means good work, the good deeds. Why? Because the dunya, at dunya mazra'atul akhirah, the plantation of the akhirah. Here you plant, there you harvest. So if you don't plant here, you cannot harvest there. You come empty-handed there. What do you plant here? Plant good deeds, good relationships, good work, save lives, save dignities. If there are families who can't afford, reach out to them. If there are families who are lost and confused and broken, reach out to them. Bring happiness, bring dignity to your community. Save your, your community. How many men and women, how many young men and women we have in our communities that are lost. They don't have parents, they don't have guardians, they don't have sometimes, sometimes they don't have food to eat. They don't have medicine. They can't afford medicine. Reach out to them. Build good relationships. Your intention should be good. Some people, they leave this life with a huge legacy. Some people leave this life after 70, 80, 90 years with zero legacy. They don't have even one good work. They lived like animals just for themselves, not for others. Be careful. Be careful. Sometimes we forget why we are here. Believe me, we forget. Sometimes we think we are here forever. وَعْمَلْ لِآخِرَتِكْ كَأَنَّكَ تَمُوتُ غَدًا Work for the dunya. Don't be lazy. Work hard every single day. Work hard. Because you are building the foundation of the akhirah. Don't be lazy. Don't say, oh, I'm going to die. Because some people ask him, why don't you clean yourself? Why, why should I clean? My, I'm going to die. Why don't you get married? Because I'm going to die. Why don't you buy a house? Why don't you have children? Why don't you go to school? Because he's dying. This is wrong. This is wrong. You have to be serious. Build your dunya. It's okay. It's okay to buy a house, have a job, have relationships. But at the, on the other hand, don't get attached to this dunya. Be ready for eviction. We receive letters of eviction, my friends. We have to evict our properties. They don't belong to us. وَعْمَلْ لِآخِرَتِكَ كَأَنَّكَ تَمُوتُ غَدًا Work for Akhirah as if Israel is coming tomorrow. How do you do that? Don't get attached to the dunya. Do not rest your hope or your trust on this dunya. Don't trust the dunya. Don't trust this dunya. Don't say, I have a plenty of time to recover. I have a plenty of time to settle my accounts my hisab with this and with that. I have another 30 years ahead of me. Don't say this. Don't fool yourself. Be ready. Don't get attached to the dunya. They have to take us away. Believe me, they take us away. I said a few years ago, when I came to this country, we didn't have these iPhones. So where do you save the telephone numbers? Where do you put them? Phone book. Do you have phone books? I still have the first phone book that I got here in 1994, 25 years, I still have it. The other day I was looking into the phone book. Believe me, maybe 60% of those are dead. 60% of them are dead. This is a reality. And one day they look at my name, he's dead. He was with us. This is his phone number, his email, he's dead. It happens. It happens. Go check your phone book if you have. And look how many people are gone. No longer there. You have to update it. It's a message for all of us. وَعْمَلْ لِدُنْيَاكَ أَنَّكَ تَعِيشُ أَبَدًا وَعْمَلْ لِآخِرَتِكَ كَأَنَّكَ تَمُوتُ غَدًا And then he says, 
Imam Hassan says to his disciple, if you want dignity, you, you, some people seek dignity through their ashira, through their family, because they belong to such and such and such family. Why do we put our family names? Because we take pride. We brag about our families. But Imam Hassan says, I show you a way, even if you don't have that big family, important family, you can still be dignified. وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ عِزًّا بِلَا عَشِيرًا If you seek izza, dignity, honor, without family, without ashira, without qabila, without a tribe. وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ عِزًّا بِلَا عَشِيرًا وَحَيْبَةً Respect. بِلَا sultan, Without being sultan, rich, influential, king, prime minister. What do you do? فَخْرُجْ مِنْ ذُلِّ مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ إِلَىٰ عِزِّ طَاعَتِهِ Quit sinning. Don't commit sin. Don't commit sin. Make a pledge. From tonight, I'm not going to commit a sin. I'm going to obey God. If something is a sin, is a sin I'm not going to approach it. You live a life of dignity. You live like a king without kingdom. You don't have money, you don't have palace, but people treat you like a king. فَخْرُجْ مِنْ ذُلِّ مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ Because ma'asiya brings disgrace, my friends. Disobedience of God definitely, eventually, one day, will bring disgrace and humiliation. فَخْرُجْ مِنْ ذُلِّ مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ إِلَىٰ عَزِّ طَاعَتِهِ Imam Zain al Abidin came to touch the black stone. Hisham ibn Abdul Malik, the crown prince, was standing there. He could not approach the Kaaba. All of a sudden, a young man comes inside. People clear the path for him. People are silent. Hisham says, Who's this? I have bodyguards, all soldiers with me. I could not reach the black stone. Who is this? Of course, he knows him. But he doesn't want to confess out of jealousy, out of anger. Farazdaq was there. He says, هذا الذي تعرف البطحاء وطعته والبيت يعرفه والحل والحرم You don't know him? Everything here knows him. The house knows him. Safa and Marwa know him. The Kaaba knows him. Imam Zayn al-Abideen came without entourage, without bodyguards. Alone, and he touches the black stone in peace. This is why, because Imam Zayn, he's Zayn al Abidin. وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ عَزًّا بِلَا عَشِيرَةً وَحِيبَةً بِلَا سُلْطَانٍ فَخْرُجْ مِنْ ذُلِّ مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ Save yourself from the disgrace of disobedience. إِلَا عَزِّ طَاعَتِهِ to the dignity of his obedience. You feel you are the most dignified. Most dignified. Pentagon cannot frighten you. The world soldiers and armies cannot frighten you. Cannot frighten you. I tell you a story which I believe in. I believe in that story. When Imam Khomeini was returning from Paris to Tehran, 1979, with Air France. He had a corps of journalists with him, many journalists, French, English, American, Middle Eastern. They all say, Imam, the flight is about five hours. He slept for two, three hours, and then he stood for Salatul Layl in the upper deck. Salatul Layl. And the Prime Minister, Shahpur Bakhtiar, he threatened to shoot the airplane. He threatened, I will shoot this airplane. He was in peace. Because he's connected to his Lord. When you connect to the source of power, you don't worry. Your battery do not go dead. Because you are connected to the source of power. Have you seen people in the airports? Where, where do they sit in the airports? Where is the preferred seat? Near the outlets. Near the outlets. Because they need power. We have to sit near the main outlet. This is the main outlet. So you don't worry in this life. You don't worry about anything. 
You don't worry. Even if they threaten you, intimidate you, you are not worried. And then Imam says, وَإِنْ صَحَبَتْكَ إِلَىٰ نَازَعَتْكَ إِلَىٰ صُحْبَةِ الرِّجَالِ حَاجِ If you really desperately need friends, those are the friends. Who are the friends? He says, فَاصْحَبْ مَنْ إِذَا صَحِبْتَهُ زَانِكَ Be with a friend that becomes a source of attraction for you, a source of beauty. Don't be with people who become a source of disgrace for you. Don't be with people who bring you down. Be with people who bring you up, who save you, who increase your spiritual value. Some people, they don't have money. They are not going to treat you in, in, in fancy restaurants. They don't have mansions, big homes, but they have spiritual value. You learn from them, spiritual value. Your value is added. You are increased in your value. So stay with those. Don't waste your friendship. Don't waste your time with bad people. فَاصْحَبْ مَنْ إِذَا صَحِبْتَهُ زَانِكَ Be with a friend, sohba, companionship, with someone that zanak, zan from zain, is going to increase your value, your moral value. He's going to teach you, inspire you, encourages you. وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ وَإِنْ خَدَمْتَهُ صَانِكَ when you do service to that friend, he's not going to forgive it, forgive it or forget it for the rest of his life. He appreciates what you do. Even if you do the smallest things to that friend, he would not forget that. Always he says, this person saved me, protected me, helped me, advised me. Be with those people. وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ مِنْهُ مَعُونَةً أَعَانَكَ If one day you needed help, he's there to help you. He's there for you. Not that he turns his face and he runs away. He doesn't answer his calls. Don't be with those people. وَإِنْ قُلْتَ صَدَّقَ قَوْلَكَ He stands with you. When you speak, he doesn't accuse you. Oh, you are lying. This is not. This is not true. No. He trusts you. There is a trust between you. وَإِنْ مَدَدْتَ يَدَكَ بِفَضْلٍ مَدَّهَا If you want, if you have a good project to do, he will stand with you to help you. He will be with you. وَإِنْ بَدَتْ مِنْكَ ثَلْمَةٌ سَدَّهَا If one day you have a mishap, he would not hold it against you. He will say, I covered my eyes. Listen, he's a forgiving person. Don't be with those who are not forgiving. Just before I came to the prayers, I had a phone call. Two days ago, I had the same phone call with the same person. They are about to divorce. And every time I speak with such people, I get headache, you know. And I was telling to this lady, I, t I told her, listen, listen, if you continue speaking with this tone, accusing your ha husband, accusation, 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 you are going to make me forget my lecture tonight, believe me. I will get mental crash because I'm a human being. I'm a human being. I'm made of a'sab, you know, human being. If I hear always bad in someone complaining, complaining, don't be with those who always complain. They are never willing to forgive. I told her, listen, you have six old, six years old girl. You have to save her. If you are not forgiving, this girl is going to turn against you tomorrow in this society, in this community. Don't do that. We have to be forgiving. We, have, we all have mistakes. If we hold the grudge here and we are not willing to forgive, we destroy our own lives. Our own lives. We are the losers, not others. وَإِنْ رَأَى مِنْكَ حَسَنَةً عَدَّهَا when he sees something good from you, he will give you credit. He will remember it. Always. Always he, he's willing to give you credit. Some of friends, they don't give you credit. They claim the credits for themselves. They don't give you credit. Don't stay with them. Waste of time. وَإِنْ سَأَلَتَ If one day you ask him, immediately he will give you. وَإِنْ سَكَتَّ If you don't even ask, ابتداك. He knows that you have, in, you have need. So he initiates, he gives you. He's not waiting. And Imam Hassan did this himself. Imam Hassan, whenever there is a beggar comes, he says, immediately give him, before he opens his eyes. They say, let's wait, see what he wants. 
Imam Hassan says these three seconds of waiting, it makes him feel, you know, disgraced. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to hurt him. Give him immediately. Don't let him wait. Don't wet him. Kareem wa Ahlul Bayt. Kareem, the most generous in the family of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One day a person who was completely broke came to him. He said to him, Lam yabqali shay'un yuba'u bi dirhamin. O Imam Hassan, I have nothing left at home. If I have something to sell, I will go to sell it in the market. But I have nothing. I have family, children waiting for me. Lam yabqali shay'un yuba'u bi dirhamin. Yughnika ru'yatu manzari an makhbari. Just look at how I look. And you decide, I don't have to tell you what's happening. يُغْنِيكَ رُؤْيَةُ مَنْظَرِي عَنْ مَخْبَرِي إِلَّا حُشَاشَةُ مَاءِ وَجْهٍ صُنْتُهَا مِنْ أَنْ تُبَاعْ وَقَدْ وَجَدْتُكَ مُشْتَرِي The only thing that I have, still have, and I didn't sell it, is my dignity. My dignity. And I want to sell my dignity to you because you are worth it. You are the grandson of the Prophet. You know what Imam Hassan said to him? Imam Hassan said to him, he said immediately give him money. Don't let him even finish his sentence. Ajaltana fa'ataka wabilu birrina tallan walaw amhaltana lam nuqsiri. You came, Imam Hassan was traveling. He was traveling. And you know when you travel you have limited sources with you he gave him everything he said to him had you come to me in town i would give you given you much bigger this is a small what i have given you take what is little take this little as if you have not sold your dignity to me even to me do not sell your dignity look at imam hassan this is generous. This is generous. لا يتبعون مننا ولا أذاف. Generous people when they give, they don't even mention it because they don't want to to do favor to people. One day a man came and he received money, good gift from Imam Hassan. Some people who were sitting there they said, "Wow, wow, this man is lucky." Imam Hassan said, "I am lucky." It was an opportunity for me to give. I am more lucky than him when he came and asked me. I am the lucky one who is giving him. In giving you become lucky, not in receiving. In giving. Another man comes from Syria, brainwashed against Ahlul Bayt. He said, Dulluni al Hassan. This is after the time of Imam Ali. He said, Hassan's home is here was waiting for him. The moment he left his home, he started maligning him and cursing him. At a blank point, cursing Imam Hassan, his face. Imam Hassan returned the cursing with a smile. He said to him, I guess you are a guest in our town. You are a guest coming from outside. If you are hungry, Come, we will feed you. Or If you don't have enough clothing, we will cover you. Or if you have any needs, we are here. If you have no shelter, I will shelter you. What else do you want? This man, this man was dumbfounded. He didn't know what to say. He didn't know what to say to the Imam. He was speechless. Then he said to the Imam, Ashhadu annaka khalifatullahi fi ardah. This sentence comes from a person who truly represent God here on earth. You are the Khalifa. Kunta anta wa abuk abghabun nasi ilayhi. A moment ago, you and your father Ali were the most hated in my eyes. But today, وَأَصْبَحْتَ أَنْتَ وَأَبُوكَ أَحَبُّ النَّاسِ إِلَيْهِ Now you are the most beloved one in my eyes. This, this is how you change people. 
we think we change people with force. By bombing them, intimidating them, killing them, we change them. You don't change people by force. You change people by akhlaq, by manners, by forgiveness, by your smile, by your advice, by your love. This is how you change people. Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam was suffering from the poison. Imam Hussein would come several times a day to visit his brother Hassan, several times a day. The last time Imam Hussein came, his brother Hassan said to him, Akhi Aba Abdullah, this is the last time you see me. I'm going to leave. And then my wish is that when I leave, you carry my coffin and take it to the grave of my grandfather, Rasulullah. Because I haven't been able to go when I am sick, bedridden, to the grave of my grandfather, to the grave of my mother, Fatima. So take my coffin. So I do the ziyara. I pay tribute to the grave of my father and my mother Fatima, of my grandfather and my mother Fatima. But, I'lam anna al-qawm, Bani Umayyah here, they are not going to allow you to take my janaza inside the mosque of the Prophet. I'm telling you now, because my grandfather Rasulullah said this to me. If this is the case, don't argue with them. And I don't accept any bloodshed in my janaza, no confrontation. If they don't allow you, take my janaza to Baqiyah, next to my grandmother Fatima bin to Asad. Imam Hassan died. Hussein alayhi salam was standing next to him. See how many brothers Hussein lost, not only on the day of Ashura, before the day of Ashura. Imam Hussein saw his grandfather, the Prophet, dies. He sees his Mother Fatima alayhi salam dies. He sees his father Amir al muminin then his brother Imam Hassan, and then Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, the last one in Karbala. So he does the ghusl, the washing, the burial, the, the shrouding of the body, the salatul janazah, and then Banu Hashim, they carry the coffin of Imam Hassan to visit the mosque of the Prophet, Banu Marwan, Banu Umayyah were standing there. Marwan ibn al-Hakam said, Ayudfanu Uthman fi Aqsa al-Madina, wa yudfanu al-Hasanu inda jaddih, la wallah la yakunu hadha, wa qawaimu siyufuna bi'aydina. Wa qawaimu siyufuna bi'aydina. Is it fair that Uthman is buried there outside, and then you want to bury Hassan next to his grandfather? We are not allowed while we carry our swords with our hands. And then that woman comes riding a mule and he stands there and she says, Nahu ibnakum an bayti fa innahu la yuhtaku ala rasulillahi hijabu. Take your son away from my, my house, that lady. That lady comes, Aisha. She says, I don't allow to breach the sanctity of my house. See, bringing Imam Hassan, Sayyid Shabab Ahl Jannah, the grandson of the Prophet, the one who used to play with the Prophet, the one that the Prophet enjoyed him every minute. Now he has no right. They have no right to take his body next to the grave of the Prophet wasallam. Imam Hussein, he asked, Banu Hashim, let's carry the coffin of my brother Hassan to Baqiyah. So they carried him to Baqiyah. And then he, there in the Baqiyah, Anzalahu fi malhudati qabrih wa nazala ma'ah wa wada'a khaddahu ala khaddah. He took his brother Hassan into his grave. Imam Hussein went down inside the grave. He puts his cheek on the cheek of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. And then he leaves the grave, Haja bihil Huzn. He was overwhelmed with sadness. Aadhun Rasi Am Tatib Mahasini. 
وخدك معفور وأنت تريب غريب غريب وأطراف البيوت تحوطه ألا كل من تحت التراب غريب بكائي طويل والدموع غزيرة وأنت بعيد والمزار قريب Your grave is next to me but you are gone my brother حسن أفاطم أفاطم لو خلت الحسين مجدلا وقد مات عطشانا بشط فراتي قبور بكوفان وأخرى بطيبة وأخرى بفخ نالها صلواتي إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله 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 يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم فرج عنا وعن المؤمنين اللهم اكشف هذه الغمة عن هذه الأمة اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل الدين اللهم تقبل منا هذا اليسير بلطفك وكرمك اللهم عجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد